Hello and welcome to Archives and Records Simplified. These videos are aimed at people looking for basic knowledge about archives and records management, although at times I will also touch slightly on information and library science. These videos are designed to provide bite-sized chunks, which means that almost every video will be less than 15 minutes. These videos are honestly for everyone and comments and suggestions are always more than welcome. About me, Sean McMillan, I'm an archivist based in London, and you can learn mo more about me via my LinkedIn profile, to which there is a link posted below. And I'll also post a transcript and notes also if you struggle at any point to understand my accent. And lastly, if you enjoy these videos, I would be extremely grateful if you could kindly like, subscribe and share. Thanks again. Okay, so this one is another book review and the book being reviewed is Modern Archive Principles and Techniques by Theodore Schellenberg. Okay, so let's start with a quick overview and context. Theodore Roosevelt Schellenberg was an American archivist who was very active in the early to mid 20th century. He was a massive contributor to theory, especially appraisal. And I think there's, there's something to be said for understanding the time in which he worked. Uh, Schellenberg worked during a time when the sheer amount of records being produced were greater than ever before and new approaches really needed to be considered. He authored Modern Archives, Principles and Techniques in 1956, at which point I think he was a very experienced public servant and archivist. And it's also worth noting that his work is very much focused on sort of public organisations. Uh, Schellenberg is often compared and more often contrasted to Sir Hilary Jenkinson. He was a British archivist who published the Manual of Archive Administration in 1922, and Jenkinson rejected the idea that appraisal was the task of an archivist. According to Jenkinson, appraisal uh, should only really be done by creators, and generally speaking, Hilary Jenkinson was more in the mind that the archivist should be more passive, whereas uh, Schellenberg had the idea that the archivist should be more active. Um, they're often contrasted, but actually one thing I've, I've noticed from his manual is that Schellenberg does quote and reference Jenkinson quite a lot in several things, especially about archivists being objective. So as much as people often talk about how they differ, they also shared some opinions as well, and that shouldn't be overlooked. Um, and lastly, I'll just note that this is not a substitute for reading Schellenberg's book. The main idea is just to give you an idea of what it covers and what to expect if you were to buy it, which I thoroughly recommend. It was... Um, when I was first learning about archives and history of archives, I found Schellenberg's book to be really practical and really relevant. And even about over 60 years on, there's still a lot of content that I think is highly relevant today. Okay, so the book is split up into three areas and each, of, each chapter is associated to one of these areas. So part one, or area one, is the introduction. And chapter one, in considers the importance of archival institutions. So here, chapter one emphasizes why, ar why archival institutions are important. Uh, Schellenberg theorizes in early archives in ancient Greece, in addition to France, Britain, and the USA. He links archives to governmental efficiency and practicality, and he also describes the cultural value of archives. In chapter two, Schellenberg notes archives have sometimes been defined differently in different countries. And he notes the modern definition is rooted in definitions of recordness. He thus defines archives as records, deems worthy of preservation, and must have been created in the pursuit of some kind of purpose. Chapter three notes differences between archives and libraries, including the importance of context and archival collections and how they're created, how they're acquired, and the differences in description and organisation. That's quite important because I think one of the things he also notes is that archival practice seems to have stemmed out of library practice and it's worth noting the difference between archives and libraries especially as many archives especially in sort of university settings or academic settings are hosted within library services uh, chapter four emphasizes the importance in understanding the function of the file room um, he indicates that the archivist should promote good record management practices and that the archivist should be involved in decisions about what records government agencies wish to destroy. So that's one area where, he, where he's very distinct from Schellenberg. Uh, sorry, from Jenkinson. <laughs> okay, so part two is very records management focused. 
Chapter 5 indicates that modern records are increasingly complex, uh, that important records are difficult to retire and classify, in contrast to less important records which he believes are easy to retire and classify, and that organisations are hierarchical, structured, purpose oriented and will create records as part of their work or to achieve their purposes. Chapter 6 notes that public records are increasingly overproduced and he recommends attempting to simplify the functions, the work processes and the record procedures. He notes that simplification should be a collaborative process involving high level administrators, public officials and specialised records officers. Chapter 7 indicates the importance of classification and filing for retrieval. Here he notes that re records should be arranged in relation to their use and classified to reflect the functions. Chapter 8 identifies the registry system as one of the earliest forms of record keeping. At Schellenberg notes the use of numbers to maintain intellectual control and the use of shelving and filing cabinets. In chapter 9, he notes how the American filing system differs from the European registry system. Uh, he notes how the American system evolved out of the European registry system, and he also talks about the evolution of filing systems, including duplicating filing equipment and supplies, in addition to various types of then modern systems. And lastly, chapter 10, he notes the success of disposition depends on its determinations. He emphasizes careful analytical work. Uh, the kinds of information often needed, the documents which should be prepared for disposition, and the kinds of action which may be taken for effective disposition. And that concludes part two. <clears throat> and in part three, Schellenberg moves on to archival management. So chapter 11 notes that the nature of modern archives determines the work of the archivist, and that modern archives are difficult to identify he notes that the archivist has a dual responsibility of both preservation and accessibility. He notes that archivist authority is derived from the employer who grants it, and he also discusses the value of training programmes. Uh, chapter 12 also looks at ways of assessing an archive's value, and he once again looks at European examples. He also indicates what facts should be established when assessing value, and he also distinguishes between records created in a corporate environment or a location oriented environment. Chapter 13 begins by noting that modern archives are as ephemeral as they are voluminous. Um, he notes that then modern mediums were, and by then I mean in 1956, were much more likely to perish. And this is actually arguably a highly relevant observation today. Um, Schellenberg goes on to discuss storage facilities, etc. But I do think chapter 13 um, it has some relevance to what we're seeing today because it's very similar themes in regards to digital information, which is also increasingly voluminous and it's done in a way that's, that's very ephemeral. So that's one area of the book where I think that obviously you have to accept that it was written more than half a century ago, but I do think the themes and the ideas are similar to what we're seeing today. Chapter 14 notes the distinction between arrangement and archival setting and the government agency. He develops various rules, including one that dictates records should be maintained in an order that supports retrieval. Uh, chapter 15 notes the features of an archive that one would describe. Um, he discusses some examples of finding aids and what they would feature. Chapter 16 discusses various publication programmes, such as territorial papers and calendars, which he notes has uh, developed in Britain. And finally, chapter 17 begins with noting the goal of archival practice is to preserve and make available. He concludes by noting that the archivist is a drawer of water from the scholar and the archivists are the guardians of truth. He indicates the impartial role of the archivist, which may differ from that of, from the historian. OK, so what I've just given you here is, is basically a, an overview of Schellenberg's book. Um, a few conclusions then. So. Schellenberg indicated a much more active role for the archivist than had been advocated at previous times in archival literature, certainly much more than Hilary Jenkinson. He places the archivist also in a much broader context, perhaps part as an organic process. So often throughout the book, Schellenberg identifies the archivist as part of an agency that at times is even working with records creators. And um, this is quite interesting. I like when books do that. Because although as archivists and record keepers, you, you tend to maybe see yourself as a distinct profession, 
you do sort of intersect with other agencies or other industries and I think that that's quite an astute observation and I think that's always something worth remembering. I would say that several of his teachings are still highly influential today, such as his distinction between primary and secondary value. I think that people still focus on that. Um, but some people would challenge some of his other ideas. I think his concept about the objective or impartial role of the archivist, I think that's increasingly coming under scrutiny and a lot of people are looking at that and wondering if that's tenable um, in the 21st century. Uh, it should also just be kept in mind that this is from 1956 and that the challenges of digital records, among many other types of challenges, were very far away in the future. So although I think this book has some really relevant themes today, you do have to remember that it was very much of its time. Um, one of the things I really like about Schellenberg, and I do like it when authors do this, is that they considered the history of archives. So, you know, at times he talks about ancient Greece, he talks about the development of record keeping in other countries. And I think this really gives the book a lot more substance. And he also talks a little bit about what I would say is American exceptionalism. So he talks about the sort of American system and how that differed from Europe. And I think that's quite interesting as well. And lastly, I, I would say that you know, there's a term for what I would call the Sigmund Freud effect. And that's when Sigmund Freud began writing about psychology, a lot of what he wrote about turned out, <coughs> turned out to be inaccurate or controversial. But it served a purpose and it created a conversation. I think the same could be said for Schellenberg. I think uh, some of what he wrote, I think probably isn't relevant today and is maybe open to challenge, but I think in generating a conversation is in itself a form of progress. And sometimes in trying to challenge an idea or dismiss an idea, you can come up with new ideas and create new observations. So anyway, that concludes the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or notes or questions, uh, please feel more than free to leave them at the bottom. Otherwise, thanks again for listening and I hope to I hope you enjoy these videos. Thanks. And if you enjoy these videos, I would be extremely grateful if you could like, subscribe and share. And also just to remind you that I would be absolutely delighted to take any requests for future videos also.